I'm back with another Q&A of sorts. Uh, today I bring you table topics. I purchased this. There are 135 cards in here and they just have random questions. Uh, the rules says that the it's recommended for ages 12 and up, but you know, they're PG. It says it's for all ages, but they got to have an age grade in there. So I'm just going to grab a few cards and see what we get. <laughs> what even is this video? And I'll just shut up when I think it's time to shut up. So first up, if you got a tattoo, what would you get and where would you put it? Why am I holding this up? It's backwards to you. It's backwards to me. Oh, uh, if I got a tattoo, what would I get and where would I put it? I've actually thought about this in the past and Back in the day, I was really big into wolves, which I still like wolves, but at the time when I was really heavy into wolves, I was thinking of a wolf paw print, and now it's kind of morphed into foxes, and I always thought maybe like some kind of cartoony fox, or a fox on a, mo a crescent moon, something with a moon, like a night sky motif, something or another. Um, I had thought like a feather, but I didn't want to be a typical girl with a feather, but, let me see if I can find a picture real quick. Hold on. Okay, I found some pictures. So, you know, like a silhouette of a fox. Something like that, maybe. Or like that. Or a cart, like that's the one I saw with a fox on the moon. Not this one in particular, but, you know, a fox on the moon. Or something like that. Um, granted, that's watercolor. And I know a watercolored tattoo will fade super fast, you know, similar to hair. Over time, it will fade more, so maybe not watercolor, but just something real simple. Uh, not too small, because I don't want it to lose detail over time, but, you know, not huge either. And if I got one, where would I put it? Probably on the forearm. Uh, I thought potentially the shoulder, but... Honestly, I'm always wearing something, and the only time you would potentially see the shoulder is during the summer when I'm wearing a bathing suit or something, so if I'm getting a tattoo, I'm looking at it for my enjoyment, okay? I don't want it somewhere I can't see it, so here, and I mean, I'm fat, let's be honest, I'm losing weight, but I still wouldn't want it on an area of the body that is prone to be able to stretch via... You know, be it your arm, a thigh, a calf, uh, if you're skinny, or if it's your desire, your stomach, you know, whatever. I wouldn't want it on something that's uh, stretchable or whatever. So, yeah, probably the forearm or maybe the shoulder. I, way, way back in the day, I toyed with maybe on the neck or even like one of those behind the ear things, but... No, I wouldn't do behind the ear, and I never wear my hair up, so the neck would be pointless. In which activity would you like a lesson from an expert? Hmm, let's think about this. I've really always wanted to learn boxing. I don't know why, but I've always wanted to. So that would be cool to take an actual boxing class. Um, musically? A piano or violin like I've played around on the piano from time to time back in the day I could play some stuff I could play a little bit of the fur release and uh, lately that's some kind of accomplishment but um, I definitely couldn't play anything now and mom and dad did give me a violin for either my birthday or Christmas and I have played with it you know it's not just sitting up somewhere but I'm terrible at it I need to go back on YouTube and practice some more because not coordinated. I mean, why did I think I would be coordinated with a violin when back in the day I tried playing the guitar and I can't do this and this at the same time. It, I, I'm not that coordinated or, you know, um, anything else? Oh, dance. I would love to take any ballroom dance classes, salsa, tango, anything like that right up my alley. You would think I'd like Dancing with the Stars, you know, like, but I don't. I don't do reality TV. Um, I had the opportunity to take ballroom dance, though, when I went to ULM. But why didn't I take it? What was the reasoning? 
Oh, because the, the dang schedule conflicted. Okay, I don't know if they're still like this, but back in the day, you had a certain day you could sign up for your classes. A through whatever had this day, blah, 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 had this. Yeah, I got Lily right here. Uh, and, you know, you had a certain day. And, by, of course, I'm an M, so by the time it got to me, all the good classes were gone. And the ballroom class I was looking at happened to coincide with my photography class because I was taking photography at the time. And, um... Obviously, because that was my major, uh, the photography course trumped the ballroom, and which, that was a joke, that photography course, but we're not here about that. Um, yeah, but any of the dances would be cool. Uh, oh, hello, first and foremost, why wasn't this the number one answer? SFX, a course in SFX makeup, anything movie-related movie industry. Movie industry related. There we go. Get it together. Anything, you know, be it set design, costumes, uh, normal makeup, SFX makeup, acting, directing, anything. That would be awesome. Yeah, why don't we go with that first? Hello? What's your favorite part of Thanksgiving dinner? Oh, <laughs> well, if you know me, you know I don't eat Thanksgiving dinner. That's going to annoy me that I flew that card over there. Um... I don't, I don't do Thanksgiving. Why am I in the South? Why am I Southern? Why am I still here? Because I don't do Southern food either. Southern comfort food? Not for me. Crawfish, seafood, gumbo, uh, black eyed peas, string beans, green beans, potato casserole, green bean casserole, stuffing, dressing, all that. I ain't a fan. I ain't here for it. Um, so Thanksgiving food wise, turkey and rolls, man. That's all I eat. Turkey and roll. And I'll cook banana, or not cook, I'll make banana pudding and Japanese fruit pies for the family. Uh, that's for Thanksgiving. Christmas is normally dark cake, but yeah, so I mean, I'm not big on Thanksgiving food. I'm not a big foodie in general, contrary to what many believe. Um, but outside of the food, Thanksgiving dinner, of course, being on family. All right, next card. Do you possess any of the qualities of your astrological sign? I am a Virgo. I know I possess qualities of a typical Virgo, but hold on. Let me get my tablet and Google some traits so we can see what they are, actually. I have returned. So, I'm going to give you both sides of the coin. I'm not going to sugarcoat things. I'm going to give you positives and negatives. And let's start with the negatives. So, some negatives. Oh, well, first off, if you don't know, a Virgo is born between August 23rd and September 22nd. Now, some negatives of a Virgo, they can be nagging, warrior, petty, overcritical, overdemanding, uh, fussy, <laughs> um, indecisive. Yes, I can be indecisive sometimes. Let's see. Obsessive, compulsive, argumentative, yes. Petty, oh baby, can I be petty? Yes. Cold, eh, sometimes. Uh, I think I've already said anxious, shrewd at times. A lot of these are associated with like the organized side of a Virgo. A Virgo is, which I'm sure we'll probably get into that, but a Virgo is generally considered real organized. They like things a certain way, uh, clean freak, if you will. So a lot of the negatives are going to be based off of that aspect, too. So uh, let's get into the positives. Oh, wait, wait, no, no. We got some more negatives. Hold up. Some other negatives could be, get in the right place, overcritical, like I said, because they have a clear picture in their mind as to how things should be. Yes, I have clear pictures of how I want certain stuff to be in my mind, and I can obsess about it, about every little detail. Like, for instance, when I'm doing the SFX makeups during Halloween, you guys have nothing but nice things to say. You are so nice. That it looks awesome. It's, nobody ever has anything negative to say. And 
I'm like, y'all are just so too nice. <laughs> because I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh, you can see that edge. You can see where I should have done this. You can see where I should have done that. I should have had this contact. I should have had that. I see everything that shouldn't be there. And I'm only uploading like one pitch, one or two pictures usually. Do you know how many pictures it took to arrive at that to be the one that was going to be the winner? Uh, hello. And then I'm not even really completely satisfied, but I've done invested all this time. And I'm like, I got to post something because I've done done it. <laughs> and then I kind of feel crappy afterwards because I'm, like I said, I'm overthinking. And y'all are like, it looks fun. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm like, no, there's so much wrong. Uh, fussy, again, they get lost in the details. They can be harsh. They call a spade a spade and they don't sugarcoat their opinions before putting them across. I'm at the point, well, yes, this is a definite possibility, uh, not a possibility, this is a definite in my life. Um, I just don't have time for the drama, the BS, you know, mean what you mean and say what you say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, conservative Virgos are conservative and don't readily accept modern ideas. I completely disagree with that. I am the least conservative Virgo out there. I mean, my gosh. I color my hair all the time. I have viewpoints that are vastly different from a lot of people, which a lot of people don't know that because I don't share a lot of my viewpoints because I don't want the drama. Uh, judgmental Virgos can be criticized for being judgmental. Again, I, I disagree with that. I'm one of the least judgmental person people out there because I don't want you to judge me, so I'm not going to judge you. Now, am I saying I am without judgment? No. I'm sure I have judged people many times before, but I try to actively not do it. Um, so, yeah, I don't think they're really judgmental. Now to the positives. Virgos don't just talk about it. They do it. They're... Not a uh, all talk, no action type. When they decide they're going to do something, you better believe they're going to make it happen. Exactly. If I have something set, let's do it. Let's get it done. Let's not mess around. A Virgo has an analytical mind that's capable of finding solutions to tough problems. They have clever minds, a keen attention to detail that allows them to find solutions to problems that others simply miss. Oh yeah, I can get down with that. Are you comfortable? Look at her. <laughs> she ain't gonna break on that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, the picture is everything here. Virgo gets frustrated by incompetence and stupidity. The Virgo isn't the most patient person in the world when it comes to dealing with downright incompetence and stupidity. Sometimes they just need to take a deep breath, count to ten, and realize that not everyone in the world can be a rocket scientist. Um, hello, were you watching me today when you wrote this? Because yes, 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 yes. Case in point, today I was on a phone call and a five-minute conversation could have been over in one minute had the person told me what they wanted to start with. Get on the phone, they give me the information, tell me what the phone call is about, and I'm like, okay, cool. What do you need me to do? That should have been the end of the conversation. What do you need me to do? They give me the thing that I need to do. No. They go back and say the exact same thing they just said to me a moment ago. I'm like, okay. What do you want me to do? Give me a solution here. Third time, she repeats it again. The same thing. Finally, I said, look, lady, you got to give me something to do here. Do I have to do your job for you? Give me a solution. You're telling me a problem. Give me a solution. Do you want me to do this or do you want to do this today? And she's like, oh, okay, just do this. And I'm like, okay, end of discussion. Why, sorry, I jumped to this bush, y'all. Why are you making me, why are you wasting your breath saying the exact same sentence three different times and not giving me an answer? Uh, uh, you know, a solution. Why do I have to be the one that gives you the solution? You're the one that called me. 
Yes, I cannot deal with stupidity and incompetence in people anymore. Back in the day, I had more patience. Now, none. I cannot deal with it. None. Virgos are sensitive and emotional, even if they don't show it. Agreed. You probably wouldn't guess it just by looking at them, but Virgos can be quite sensitive and emotional deep down. Some things get to them more than most people realize, but they refuse to talk about it for fear of burdening others with their problems. Yes. A Virgo is a perfectionist, sometimes to a fault. Virgos are notorious perfectionists who figure if they're going to do something right, they might as well do If they're going to do something, they might as well do it right. And damn right. Uh, let's not just have this and then go off and not finish something. Let's do it and finish it and get it done correctly and properly because I'm not wasting more time having to go back and do something 15 times when it could have been done right the first time. A Virgo has a hidden wild side that only a lucky few see. I agree. Virgos are born skeptics who don't believe something until they see it for themselves. What are y'all talking about? A Virgo is not, to re not the type to rely on the gossip and hearsay of others and prefer to base their reasonings on fact and concrete evidence. They're born skeptics and independent thinkers who like to come to their own conclusions about things. Completely agree. I'm not going to see a article, a survey... Or even, you know, if somebody's gossiping about somebody, I'm not going to take that at face value. I'm going to do my own research and see the person for who they are and come to my own conclusions. Virgos have strong opinions and aren't afraid to voice them. Yes, I touched on this like a little while ago. You remember? Virgos tend to be strong-minded and as a result, they can be rather opinionated individuals who aren't afraid to make their opinions known. They aren't easily influenced by herd mentality and firmly stick by their convictions and ideas. Agree, a thousand percent. And I know there may be some out there that are like, Say, so you're not confrontational. You don't speak up and say things. Well, like I said earlier, I pick my battles. I can walk in a room, be it people I've known all my life or people I don't even know at all, and can gauge a room and you can tell when certain people are completely in their mind and nothing anything else, anyone else says is going to change it. They're 100% unmovable, unwavable in their idea or whatever it is. And so there's no point, you know. it. There's no point in having a conversation because they're not going to see any other side but their own. You know, it'd be different if they were open to looking at other viewpoints or something, but sometimes you just... You can't do that, and a lot of times I just sit back and let people talk and just listen because it's not worth putting in my input because it's it's going to be a negative situation, and I just rather not. So I'll sit back and be like, you know, I don't agree with you and all your wrongness, but I'm going to just sit here and listen, and people probably think that I'm agreeing with them a lot of the time because I don't say nothing, but when it matters, I speak up. Virgos are worriers and overthinkers. They can overthink and overanalyze every little thing. Yeah, I could see that. A Virgo is a lover, not a fighter, and they generally try to avoid confrontation. Again, I just said this. They do not go out of their way to start conflict and are much more of a lover than a fighter by nature. They are good at verbally diffusing a potentially heated situation before it can get out of hand. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I... I'm pretty good with my words sometimes. I get I get tongue tied every now and then, but I'm I'm pretty good verbally. But that's not to say. However, a Virgo is not a pushover and knows how to stand their ground. Virgos may be a pacifist, but you if you back them into a corner, you better believe they're going to stand their ground. They're far from a pushover and they're clever enough to put someone in their place with their words alone without having to resort to acts of aggression. Again, I pick my battles. A Virgo hates being lectured and judged. <laughs> yes! If there's one thing that's sure to get a Virgo, it's when others think they have the right to lecture and judge them on their decisions and life choices. To Virgos, this is frankly none of their business. They hate feeling interrogated or like people are criticizing their every move. Yes, 
And that's not to say I can't take constructive criticism. I can. But there are times when somebody is just being mean to be mean. Or petty to be petty. And... Like, everyone's entitled to their opinion. And you're, you're entitled to that. But... I don't have to listen to it. <laughs> you know? I, it's my life. And I can value your input. Like... Let's just go basic hair. That's one of the easiest things that I get on the daily from everybody under the sun. People I know, people I don't know. And I've had people I know, people I don't know. Complete random strangers that more or less tell me I shouldn't be doing my hair the way I do it. And that it looks better natural or whatever. And it's the tone and the way they present themselves that it's in such a negative connotation. I'm like, excuse you. I don't talk about you and whatever little issues you got going on. Be a little more nice. Rude. Virgos can be bossy, but only in the name of getting snuff done. Edited that in the moment to be PG here. Uh, yeah, again, push come to shove. Let's get it done. Quit procrastinating. You know? A Virgo is attracted to confidence, ambition, and intelligence. Well, who isn't? Virgos can sometimes come across as cold, but the truth is they're just cautious about opening up. Even though they come across as cold in distance to those they don't know, well, the truth is they're just cautious about opening up to people preferring to take their time to get to know a person first. Um, Lily, anyone in the back? Hello, you want to join the club? Uh, I've been called stuck up, a, a witch, uh... Standoffish? Any of those? You want to come join the club? Because party one here. All the time. All the time. And I'm sorry. Again, I like to judge a room when I walk into it. I'm cons I, I'm too considerate of other people, is what it is. <laughs> like, I'll go in a room, and again, if it's people you know, people don't know, it don't matter. You can judge a room. You can tell from overhearing conversations who... Is firm in what they have and everything. And you can tell what conversations to bring up with what kind of people. And what conversations not to bring up with what kind of people. And then once you're sitting around with a group of people for a while, you can tell, oh, well, this person doesn't like cursing. This person doesn't like this. This person doesn't like that. And so I just be cautious of it, you know. Like, just say, for instance, somebody that curses, that doesn't like cursing. I'm actively not going to do that around them then. And other people, I know it's fine to do it around them. And so, as a result, a lot of people have the preconceived notion that you're standoffish, you're cold, you're a witch, you know, whatever. That you're shy, you're reserved, you're uh, all those things. And a little bit of it might be shy and reserved, but at the end of the day, I do like to read a room, and then sometimes certain people just aren't going to let you speak up because they have to be the center of attention, and even if you have something to say, you can't say it because there's no time to even get a word in sentence-wise because everyone blah, 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 and doesn't give nobody a second to talk. And I'm sorry if I seem standoffish and cold and a bitch and anything else because I'm trying to be polite and you're just being rude. A Virgo can seem cool as a cucumber while simultaneously being on the verge of a total nervous breakdown. Virgos stay organized and can't stay stand clutter. Okay, I agree and disagree with this. There are things I like to have a certain way, and a lot of it is stuff I can control. Like, here at home... I have, when I leave my house, my lights are turned off, I know what doors are shut, I know, I know what all I've done before I left, and when I come home, if there's something weird or out of place, I'm like, wait a minute, did I do that? And I'm trying to think back, and because I'm observant of things, or like at my office, I like having things a certain way, because it's easily accessible to me, uh, even more, uh, when I go to a restaurant, when we're at the table or a booth or whatever, you know, I have my area just like you have your area. I got my plate, my glass, my silverware, all that. And 
I've got my area. You stay in your area. Don't be pushing your plates on me. Don't be encroaching my area. Don't be flinging your dirty napkins, gross, in my area. And, like, when I'm done eating and everything, I'm the, per the person I'll stack my plates. I'm not going to randomly gra grab everybody's plates because that's just weird. But I'll take my plates and stack them up and, like, you know, put them in my area but to the side. And, you know, that's just one thing. But things that are out of my control, I can't even think of an example right now. But things that have external factors that are beyond my control, I'm not, like, OCD about those things. Like, if... Again, I, nothing comes to mind. Like, if... I, I, again, I don't know. But there's certain things I am... A little OCD. Which everybody, I think, is. Like, there are certain people, like... Back in the day, I helped somebody fold towels, and Lord forbid, I folded that towel wrong. And I'm like, well, this is the way we do it in my house, because in our cabinet, that's how they fit. Uh, if you wanted me to fold it that way, you should have let me know beforehand. I don't know your cabinet. I don't know your life. I was just trying to help you. Forgive me. I'm not going to help you ever again. Um, moving on. A Virgo is calculated and doesn't make reckless decisions. Again, that's, uh, I'm 50-50 on that. There are times where I'm going to be calculated and make a wise decision. And the example I'm about to give is about to say, well, really, you're that calculated? But, yes. When I go clothing shopping, and I know Mom can probably attest to it, she probably cannot stand when she goes clothes shopping with me because I take 30 minutes to an hour in one store. And that's because I like to gather as many clothes as possible and take them into the dressing room at one time. And I really hate those dressing rooms that only give you, like, oh, you can only take three or four in at a time. I'm like, man, let me live my life. Let me take 15 of clothes in here. That way I can get disappointed in one fell swoop instead of coming in and out of this place five, six times and get disappointed every time. Like, I understand theft, but come on. But something as simple as going and trying on clothes. I'm in the dressing room. I'm sitting. I'm looking. I'm sitting. And do I look like a fat plum? <laughs> Is it tight? Do I like it? If it's sleeveless, Lord forbid, do I have a kimono to wear with it? it you know, if it's a bra, does it have that, you know, new sound to it? Because I can't stand that. Uh, is the feel, you know, all these things go into it, and if I find some singular flaw, that's it. I don't want it, you know, because if I find a flaw with it now, I'm going to find a flaw with it later, and three weeks from now, it's going to be emphasized even more, and it's just going to be sitting in the closet going to waste, and you better believe, before I spend 40 $50 on a dang t-shirt, 50 $60 on some jeans, 30 to $50 on a dang bra, $60, $70 on a kimono, kimono, no, no, come on, $70 for this crap, you better believe I'm going to make sure I like it, so there are certain things that yes, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm going to weigh in you know, the pros and cons of everything, but obviously, I dye my hair all the time, all the time, so I am spontaneous about some things, and you know, there are certain gadgets and new things that come out that I'll just grab in the spur of the moment. So, I'm like 50-50 with that one. A Virgo is modest and humble. Sure. They're always working hard to improve their future. And as a friend, Virgo is loyal to the end. So, yes, I very much relate to most of my astrological sign qualities, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, holy crap, <laughs> this video is about to be 29 minutes long, so I'm going to cut it short. We spent way too much time on this astrological aspect, but we went through four cards, and there are 135 less four, 131, so we got a lot more to go through, and I don't know the next time I'll do it, just whenever I feel. I'm not going to do it too terribly often, because I just don't want to, but I want to kind of space it out, but the, again, this was Table Topics, a whole bunch of cards. They have so many different versions um, they got a dinner party, not your mom's dinner party, kids, travel, road trip, deal breaker, whole different, you know, it's kind of like, uh, I can't think of it, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. I've done managed to make this go to 30 minutes. I'll see you guys later. Bye.